Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Laura Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock here in the morning on Friday morning, September the 2nd. I'm glad to be here. This is One Child to Be a Survivor to Another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And the chat room's open. I did pop the link into there to what we're talking about. And I'm looking at Robert Bernie's web pages. Um, Robert Bernie is a codependent counselor, a therapist. He's a grief counselor. He's a an author. He's written a book called Codependence, The Dance of Wounded Souls. And he's a, a spiritual teacher. He's he's written a whole lot of stuff here on his website, www.joyjoy2meu.com. We've been looking at this for a few months now. At least, well, it's getting close to three months probably now. Um, he's got a lot of information there about codependency and what what is codependence and, and codependent behaviors as well as um, inner child work, relationship stuff. There are lots and lots of good information. Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. I know I am. And, you know, so I appreciate everybody who's tuning into my shows and, and, and going along this journey with me. And this is my healing journey here in the morning. I'm one child to be a survivor to another. And I'm just working through things as I go. And it just allows me, you know, this half hour in the morning to work through stuff sort of in a manageable chunk, you know, where I can just take a look at it and um, sort of process what I need to process, feel what I need to feel. I'm going to be doing that anyway, regardless whether I do the show. I thought, well, I'll just share you know, my experience with other people, and that way, you know, hopefully, you know, it will be helpful for people who maybe on their healing journey who don't have anybody to validate their experience or or anybody that's really, or whether they feel they can trust to talk to or just to listen to. So, you know, hopefully it's helping somebody. Um, you know, I appreciate it. I'm not a counselor or therapist. I'm just a private citizen paying to do these shows. And so you have to listen to, to these shows and any of my shows and all of my shows at your own discretion. I'm talking about abuse, and abuse is a sensitive subject, and I just tell it like it is. I don't sugarcoat it or try to make it look pretty or anything like that, or acceptable or anything like that. You know, abuse is a, is not acceptable. That's just the whole issue. And so, um, you know, I just tell it like it is. So you have to listen at your own discretion to all of my shows. And if you're under the age of 18, I just ask that you have permission to listen to my shows. There's a lot of adult content on my shows, and I think that young people under the age of 18, you know, you should be protected at all times, and you need to have somebody like an adult, listen to the show with you, and that way they can help you decide whether or not it's age-appropriate, you know, okay for you to listen to it. So thanks, everybody. We'll get right into this. I'm looking at um, inner child healing work on Robert Bernie's web pages, and this is another portion of the inner child healing, and we might have gone through it, but there's some things on here that I kind of want to retouch on. It just, you know, there was quite a few pages with the inner child healing work. If you go to a site index, and I was working down through them, in order. Um, so that's why I don't think that we went through this. I think we went through another page that was kind of similar, but I don't think it was actually this one. I don't recognize all of it, you know what I mean? So um, if it's sort of the next in line in the he- inner healing uh, process of recovery. And so um, here's a, I think there's a few more pages after this. So as I was working down in chronological order, um, just as if I was reading a book or something from, you know, from him. So we, I just thought we'd pick up here, but we were yesterday we were looking at um, codependent behaviors versus counterdependent beha- behaviors, and that was just a short little article, but it was really interesting because I recognized a lot of stuff in that 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 I do behaviorally that you know that I need to work on. So this is called inner child healing, the process of processing, and that's from Joy to Me and You, and that's www.joy uh, j o y the number two a u dot com forward slash processing p r o c E-S-S-I-N-G, processing.html. And that's where I'm getting this information. I'm just reading through here, and hopefully you're getting something out of this, too. And um, he says, when Robert Birdie says, when we start observing our internal process, then we can start discerning between the different levels involved, and we can start separating out the codependent dysfunctional messages from the information, uh, from the information that is useful and informative. And then we can start setting internal boundaries within the mental, between the mental and emotional, and within the emotional levels of our being. So he says, in order to start beginning uh, being in the moment in a healthy, age-appropriate way, it is necessary to heal our inner child. And the inner child we need to heal is actually our inner children who have been running our lives because we have been unconsciously reacting to life out of the emotional wounds and attitudes, the old tapes of our childhoods. And so he says, we need to discern between different ages of the child, between different emotional wounds, in order to see our own inner process more clearly. And once we start having boundaries within the mental, and between the mental and emotional, then we can also start having boundaries within the emotional level of our being. 
So we can start determining the roots of our patterns, the causes of our emotional wounds, and we can start getting in touch with the five-year-old who feels so much shame, with the 14-year-old who is rebelling by self-destructing, with the romantic within who wants to believe in fairy tales, etc. And the purpose of the inner child healing process, the codependency recovery process, is to learn how to change our relationships into healthier, more fulfilling, and happier experiences. And the goal is to learn how to stop empowering the past so that we can relax and enjoy life today. So the goal is to learn to be loving and kind to ourselves so that we can manifest love into the world. And in order to do these things, it's, it is vital to start eliminating the toxic shame that has been dictating the human experience. As we learn to eliminate that shame our internal process, we can stop projecting it onto other wounded souls. So this is really quite interesting. I think, you know, this is exactly where it's at. <laughs> you know, this is in order to start living, you know, like uh, uh, living in the moment, living now, living now, you know, instead of allowing, you know, my past to just to to saturate my feelings, my thoughts, my emotions, my decisions, um, you know, my 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 conscious mind, my unconscious mind, you know, my subconscious mind, like. It's important to work on this stuff. That's basically exactly what I'm doing. You know, like for like I started working on my healing journey pretty well about April 2007, and you know, it's uh, it's, it's been over four years, and like, you know, it's taken me a while to go through this stuff. Certainly, it's ha- it doesn't happen overnight, and um, but I'm in a lot better place now than I ever was. But I still have work to do, and I recognize that I had all this inner child healing to do. You know, because I realized it was all these wounded parts of myself that was like. I was like, wow, you know, like I couldn't believe how many wounded parts of myself there really were. I just thought there was like one, you know. And I started looking in and I started seeing that I had so many wounded parts of myself. And I was like, oh, man, I really need to, (laughs) I need to go back and fix that, you know, so I can move on so that I can actually enjoy today and, and, and not be stuck in the past and not be stuck in the flashbacks, not be stuck in that emotional anger of just being so angry about what happened to me as a child, you know, and <clears throat> it's been hard. It's been a long haul for sure. This four years, you know, like it hasn't been easy, and um, it's not easy for anybody. You know, we have, we're all on our own path, our own journey, and you know, someone might not take someone someone you know may take may take a lot less time than that to heal, and other people just may take a whole lot longer. And I don't, you know, I'm just not a counselor, not a therapist, not a psychotherapist. I really don't know. All I know is that you know I know lots of people who are healing from child abuse, and they 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 still have the healing work to do. And they, you know, they're still on a journey, right? And so, now just keep going, you know, just one piece at a time, one little bit at a time. And I find, you know, I mean, like I'm not an overly joyous person anyway. I mean, I don't, ex- ex- I don't really, I've never been the type to just exude joy. You know what I mean, like, and I think it is from my upbringing. I'm sure of it. I wasn't brought up to exude joy, and um, it wasn't welcomed in our home, you know. It was just shut down immediately. If you if you started showing any signs of being happy, it was shut down. You know, somebody was going to shut it down, whether it was a parent or my, one of my siblings. So basically, you know, we just were trained just to be morose and kind of you know cocky and have you know this. I just learned from the best, you know, my parents. And so I'm not the type to be showing exuberant amounts of joy anyway. But I, I do like to smile and I like to have a good time and I like to. I find joy more deeper, a deeper experience than on the outside. Like when I, when I'm experiencing joy, maybe somebody else wouldn't recognize it on me because I'm not jumping around and, you know, flailing my arms and singing songs and stuff. Like when I'm experiencing joy, it's probably so much, it's so much on a more on a spiritual, deeper spiritual level. Uh, somebody else might even realize <laughs> that I'm experiencing joy. So that's the thing. It's it, I do experience some joy. I just don't necessarily show it while my out, outward, ex, outward appearances. But I'm learning how, you know, to, you know, because I've always been able to find some good stuff in life, you know, and I mean, even like in my 20s and and 30s, even in my darkest days, you know what I mean, I'd be able to pull myself out of it. And that's the thing where, you know, it's sort of probably a little bit different than some people who were not able to pull themselves out of it, you know. Um, Like two of my brothers were not able to pull themselves out of it. They they killed themselves, you know, and it's just, it's really disappointing. You know, it's sad, right? It's like, well, okay, they let my parents win that fight, you know, and I... But I just can't do that. You know, I have to I have to try to find something in this life that makes me hang on here and you know, and and what what it is is this is horrible for the people around you that actually do care about you and do and do love you. Like I mean I have a sweetheart in my life who's we've been together sixteen years and I thought that's a real slap in his face if I just 
kill myself, you know what I mean? Because he's, what's that saying to him? He doesn't count, he doesn't matter. And he does. <clears throat> and so I was always able to kind of pull myself out of that dark spot, you know what I mean, and, and keep motoring on. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I was still stuck with myself, and it was a miserable experience. Because at the end of the day, I was sitting on the couch, I was like, oh man, I am still stuck in this in this situation of, of the knowledge and the feelings of of hatred and anger and rage for what happened to me as a child and what happened to my family and that my family's still so, so dysfunctional. I can't even have a relationship with them on any level. And, you know, that's always disappointing because there's a few of us left and the ones that are left, I just, I cut them off. You know, I'm like, that's it. Um, it so, it, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's hard, right? But what I decided to do is start changing the way that I feel. And I thought, the only way I'm going to be able to get through this, I can't change the past, and I, I certainly can't change what happened to me. But what I can do is change the way that I feel about myself. You know, I don't even think I'll be able to ever change the way I feel about the abuse. I really don't. It was not okay. Um, see, if I go ahead and say, oh, well, it's okay, and excuse it away, um, to me, that's just agreeing with that abuse is okay. And I really, I just can't do that you know, on any level, um, because that's just incredibly wrong. And so for me, I have to be able to put everything in its place. And so that's why I'm working through, you know, my inner child healing work, um, working through my own, you know, just my own process. Because I thought I can't just excuse it away. I can't be in denial. So I'm going to have to actually change the way I feel about myself and, you know, learn that the past is the past. They're not hurting me now. This is all from the past. And eventually, hopefully, have a balance in there, you know, where I can spend more time in the moment, more time in enjoying myself, more time just living life um, instead of more time in, in this past pain. And so that's where I, 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 I've actually made a lot of progress in that. And it's just because I just, you know, every day do a little bit of work, do a little bit of reading, do a little bit of thinking, do a little bit of writing, whatever I'm doing. It does help. It does make a difference. And and this is my talk, you know, that's my talk therapy. I mean, this is what I'm doing here in the morning. So this definitely helps me out a lot. Um, so you know, it's 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 just a process, right? So we have to just figure out, like, you know, all of us are different. So all the we're all going to need different things. You know what I mean? But we have to figure out what it is that we need. You know, and then and then allow ourselves to to do it. Allow ourselves to get help. You know, like I would never suggest self-help for for everybody right i mean if you if you have to know yourself that you can do self-help right and there's uh, there's a really cool workbook the, the, I'm, I've, I've mentioned it on here many times and that's the many of you may have already heard of it but that's the asca uh, um, survivor to thriver workbook manual from the adult survivors of child abuse um a more center program and that's asca that's www.asca support s-u-p-p-o-r-t dot org a ASCA support dot org. It's Survivor to Thriver Manual, and that's a great workbook. The first like thirty four or thirty five pages are safety first, and if you read even just the thirty four thirty five pages of safety first, you'll be able to see whether or not you really are okay to do a self help healing journey without hurting yourself or hurting someone else or spiraling downward backward in your healing journey, which you don't want to do. Nobody does. So I went through there a long time ago, and um, I realized. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine to do my healing journey on my own. But not everybody is, and there's no shame in that. There's just absolutely no shame in that. Like some people would prefer to do, you know, to have a counselor. Some people would prefer to have a therapist. Whatever you do, you know, we certainly need to allow ourselves to get help. Because I made a sort of a promise to myself and um, way back when I started my healing journey. I said, like, if I can't do this, you know, and I come to a place where I can't do it, then I'm going to get professional help. And that's a huge thing for me because I don't trust those people. <laughs> I really don't. So I don't really trust very many people, but especially them letting somebody get that close to my head and that close to my to myself. You know, it's like, I don't know. Um, but I thought, hey, I don't want to end up like my brothers. You know, I don't want to kill myself. I really don't. And I thought if I if I end up, you know, at the somewhere down in my process, you know, unable to cope and unable to deal with things. I made a promise to myself at the very beginning, and I'm really good about keeping promises as far as as that type of stuff goes, because I'm just stubborn, right? So I, I said if I have to, I'll get professional help. I will not allow myself to start to, to spiral downward at all. So we really have to be our own best advocate. We really do, especially growing up abused. You know, it's not like we had any help. You know, many times many of us who were abused as children didn't have any help, and there was nobody there that 
nobody's there to help. Nobody's there to care and nobody's there to, to make sure we are getting our needs met. And so we have to do that for ourselves as adults and we have to learn how to do it. This is my process, right? I've been trying to do this for years and I'm still working on it. Like, And people would say, well, it's easy. All you have to do is this, this, and this. Well, it's easy for some people, but it's really not easy for me. You know what I mean? Because it's a changing a whole lifestyle of behaviors and habits that I've been doing for so long that really I'm comfortable in, you know. And it seems like, you know, but but are they good for me? Not necessarily, right? So this is the thing, right? Sometimes we have to really be our own best advocate and take care of ourselves, right? So he goes on to say, um, if you scroll down the page, internal boundaries, he says, this is, of course, a dance of balance because there are also times in which I need to force myself to take some action, which is a very different thing from trying to force an outcome. So Robert Bernie says, I won't get into how that works right now because this will end up way too long. I will just say that it is so important and helpful to learn, to listen, to to trust our intuition instead of giving the negative, shaming, fear-based, critical parent voice the power to determine how we feel about ourselves today. So he says, our spirits will guide us to do what we need to do when we need to do it. And the more we heal and learn to discern which internal messages are coming from the spirit and which are coming from the disease, the easier it becomes to see our path more clearly. So he says, learning to have internal boundaries was the key to the key in my process of learning to trust myself and the process more. So that's quite interesting. Um, you know, he says, internal boundaries could all be described as self-discipline or taking responsibility or growing up. And they are what is necessary for any real growth to occur. It is necessary for an, alco- for an alcoholic to start having internal boundaries in order to stop drinking, for anyone to stop any addictive, compulsive, or obsessive behavior. He says, in order to start changing our behavior, it is necessary to have an internal boundary with the child in us who wants immediate gratification, immediate relief from the feelings. So in order to change uh, what we are doing so we can change what we are getting, it is necessary to start having some internal boundaries with ourselves. You know, and I totally agree with that. Like, I mean, and as much as I don't like it because I don't like discipline. See, my issue is, oh, I don't like discipline to me is abuse, right? Because I... That's just how I was handled as a child. It wasn't, you know, I mean, I, I did receive a couple of spankings that I remember that I actually thought I deserved, and, and they were just spankings, right? I mean, I got, I got normal spankings, too. And that's why I know the difference between <laughs> normal spankings and being beaten on and hurt, you know what I mean? Like, like I, some, I got some paddlings that I thought, well, you know, that's what I get. I was really misbehaving, and I actually got what I what I, what I I needed. But, you know, and really, I mean, I, they didn't hurt me, and it was no big deal. That's why... I, the abuse was so much different, and that's why I knew the difference, right? Um, you know, for me, discipline is like kind of like abuse. Like, I don't want to self-discipline myself, you know what I mean? Like, that's just harsh, right? I mean, to me, it's just horrible, right? Um, anything, I, it, it's a very bizarre, twisted situation, because even even though I need to do things, I need to be, like, you have to have some discipline, right? I mean, we all do. Because otherwise we're just wild and we're just not we're not going to really be doing what we need to be doing and we pro- might not even be really doing all that good for ourselves. For instance, if somebody just you know, well, I was I was a substance user until the age of 21. I mean, I, I still smoke cigarettes, but you know, I was doing drugs until about the age of 21, and I finally got off them. And you know, like I did drugs for a long time and massive amounts of drugs. And the thing is, is like you know, for me. I really wanted to get off the drugs, you know what I mean? Because I knew I was going to die. I was like, man, I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to, I'll end up dead. <clears throat> I'll end up in the gutter, dead, or I'll end up, you know, dead in a drug deal gone bad. Or, you know, man, or I'll just die from an overdose or something, or just too much drugs. You know, I, mean, I was just doing so many drugs. And I thought, man, because my, my brothers were doing the same thing, and then one of them killed himself, and I was just like, I'm just going to end up like that, you know? Like, I really need to stop this and, you know, get get a life. I really wanted to have a decent life. About the age of 21 is when I started to realize that. And so I got, um, you know, I was just living a violent, kind of really extremely violent lifestyle with a bunch of people who were drug users. And, you know, it was quite um, scary sometimes, you know what I mean? Just, it was just a bad situation. So I decided to change that. So in order to do that, I had to really be self-disciplined. You know what I mean, because I was like, well, okay, I can't hang, I can't hang around with the people that are doing these drugs because I didn't cut them off right away. It was just sort of a gradual thing. You know, I was just like, eventually, I wasn't welcome. Really, I didn't want to go to the parties because it was all just going to be people just doing drugs, and I it just didn't fit in with that anymore after a while. But at one point, I did finally cut them off because I was just like, I can't be around this anymore. I really can't. Like, I have to move forward in this, and 
I'm trying to save my life. You know, and they understood. You know, many of them are dead today. Uh, but at the time, they understood. They just couldn't come with me, which is really unfortunate. But the thing is, I mean, in order to do that, I had to be really self-disciplined in order to do that. And I focused all my attention on um, getting healthier because I was just not healthy. And I, so I joined a gym and I started working out and I was still smoking cigarettes, right? So I'd, I'd go to the gym and I'd work out and I'd come out and have a cigarette, you know. But I thought, hey, at least I'm not doing drugs. That's cool. That's cool. Um, you know, so there was all pluses in there. There was pluses in there. But, you know, it's like, I mean, it's just so incredibly hard, like, you know, to self-discipline ourselves. And for for me, you know, I, 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 I continually still smoke cigarettes, and I know why I do it, you know what I mean? Like, I do it for every reason that tells me that I need to do it, you know? It's it's to calm me down, it's, it's, from, it's to help me with my anxiety issues. As long as I can have a cigarette, I'm fine, you know? Life can be just falling apart around me, but as long as I have that cigarette, I'm great, you know? And it allows me not to cope with things. It allows me not to have to deal with things. It keeps me, you know, there's many reasons why I use it, why I, why I smoke cigarettes. And, you know, like if I really want to quit, I'm going to have to be really disciplined on that. Because I did quit before. One time I really wanted to quit and I quit for over a year. And I proved myself I could do it and stay not smoking for a whole year and about two months. And, uh, you know, I started up again, and, and which was really stupid because, you know, it's just like an alcoholic. It's the same thing. It's like... You know, once you stop, you have to you have to set these these boundaries so firm, you know, that just says, no, I will not do that again, you know what I mean, ever. So, you know, I figure, well, the next time I quit, I'll have to do that because I don't want to keep bouncing back and forth like a yo-yo. It's too hard. And so, but these it's hard to discipline ourselves, you know, because I don't like being hard. I don't really like, don't, don't like being hard on myself. I really don't. And that's why I will give myself every excuse in the book. You know, I'm real easily, like, excuse. I've always been able to do it. It's because it's because I wasn't treated right as a child. And so I'm like, you know what? Cut me some freaking slack. You know what I mean? But in the meantime, I kind of lose out because I don't self-discipline myself. And, you know, I'll let things go. And I'll just, you know, it's real easy for me to just let stuff go because that's how I grew up, just letting everything go. Uh, losing everything, just letting things go, right? It's just, that, was my, that was my parents. That's what they did. And so it just they just showed us how to do that. And so, you know, for me, I don't want to hear anything about it because I'm like, look, I've already had enough garbage in my life, you know. I don't need somebody passing this garbage off on me. You know, but what I really do need is boot camp, you know. And because this wouldn't be coming at a situation like my parents. This is not coming from an abusive situation, um, of especially my, my mom and my dad, right. These people would be coming at me for, it would be a self-improvement. You know, and it would be to learn some discipline, right, and and, and to self-discipline, right. It's not it's not about abuse, right. And so that's that's the difference, you know, between that. Like my mind boot camp is is my parents, you know, and they're going to be doing all kinds of hurtful things and saying all kinds of hurtful things, and it's all going to be personal. And that's why I have a, an issue with with like discipline and discipline, right. And so as much as I really crave it, I really do. I crave it. I wanted to join the military when I was young. Uh, because I wanted some of that, I wanted some 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 sort of something outside of my family that was abusive, that could correct some of my behaviors and help me to see a different way, you know. And 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 I cra- I, I was craving that at like the age of eighteen. I really wanted to join the service, but I couldn't get in because my ankle because of my ankle. And um, so I mean, we all need boundaries. We all need discipline, but but we don't need to be harsh on ourselves. We don't need to be shaming ourselves. We don't need to be judging ourselves and blaming ourselves. We just need to learn how to do it. You know, so I think that it's so important like, you know, for especially for me because of what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do all kinds of stuff that really don't incorporate a 9 to 5 job. But I need to have an income. I have to live, you know what I mean? So it's like if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to be self-disciplined. And it's hard for me to be self-disciplined because I, my mind likes to wander. It's either wandering back to the past or it's wandering off to the future, but it's, it's rarely it's rarely sitting where it needs to be in, in the present, in the moment. And so that's why I don't do much moment work. It's all it's like okay, most of my day is spent either looking at the past or it's looking at the future or somewhere in the future, and that's you know so I don't have to deal with the moment, you know. And that's that's so I rarely get anything done. You know what I mean? In doing that. So I'm working on this. I'm working on this as we speak, actually. Um, and I've been actually working on it for a couple of years, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> have I made much progress? I mean, I've made some. So I'm not going to shame and I'm not going to judge myself. I have made some progress in it, you know, but I'm still working on it. And I need a whole lot more work done on it. I'm sort of really focusing on that right now. So 
Um, you know, I, it's just something I think that, that a lot of us have. Like, I know some people don't have a problem with this stuff at all. I know people who are so, you know, able to self-discipline and, and they get things done, you know what I mean, and um, take care of things when they need to be taken care of. And, and then, you know, it's it's good, right? It's it's good. And, and, and then I think of myself and I'm like, well, I'm just not made that way. I'm not wired that way. But I can change some of this stuff, right? So that's the thing. So he says, Terms like self-discipline or responsibility carried for me the shame and guilt of the dysfunctional society I grew up in. So he says, whereas internal boundaries is, was a much cleaner term and a much more accurately focused term, I came to focus on internal boundaries in my private therapy practice and in my personal recovery and found application of the concept to be powerful and effective in starting to help myself and others be, become more integrated and balanced. And that's from um, Wounded Souls Dancing in the Light. So, yeah, this is the thing, see, a lot of times discipline i don't like the word discipline or responsibility it just it just makes me <clears throat> it makes me feel more more guilt more shame and I, I totally agree with what he's saying and actually more anger i was more angry um than anything and people say well that anger had to be shame based or fear based and um it, it very well could have been both you know what i mean but i think a lot of it was fear based you know just living in that in that scary environment but also uh, some of it's shame you know there's a whole mix of stuff in there and um you know, so I'm kind of more motivated by anger than anything. And when I hear something like, you know, well, you just need more discipline or you need this or you need that, I can feel the anger coming up on the inside of me. I'm like, look, buddy, I've had about all I can freaking take. You know what I mean? Like, cut me some flipping slack. You know what I mean? And then when people don't understand, then I, I, I cut them off because I'm like, look, if you can't get it, then you're out of my life. Right, because I refuse. That's what I mean. I'm just so like I do have my boundaries set in place correctly as far as not allowing people to to, to hurt me. <laughs> but the thing is, I pretty well don't cut anybody any slack. And you know, but that's because if I don't think they're the type that's going to apologize, and I don't get an apology, um, because if they do something that hurts me or that bothers me, and I tell them, look, that really hurt me, or or you know, and sometimes I don't even tell them. I'll just if I if they if they do something that's really stupid. And then they don't get back to me on it because they don't realize that what they've done is really stupid. They're out of my life. I will cut people out so fast for doing stuff like that. Because it's like if you can't think before you speak, you don't belong in my life. That's just exactly how I feel. And that's just because my parents were like that. You know, my mother calling me a whore and a slut, you know, and, and slapping me around, spitting in my face, you know. She didn't care. She didn't care what she was doing to me. You know, and, and I mean, that, that that's just... I mean, that's just one day. I mean, I'm just kind of, whenever I say that, I have said that quite a bit on this show, but actually that was just one day. That doesn't include the myriad of garbage that she put on me over a period of years. Um, you know, and she didn't care what she was doing to me. So see, if somebody doesn't care enough to think about what they're saying to me before they say it, and they don't apologize for it, I'm not even going to ask for an apology sometimes. People just say the stupidest things to me, and if they don't get back to me on it and say, wow, that was really dumb, I'm really sorry, um, how about let's approach this this way, they're out of my life really fast. You know what I mean? Because I have no time for that kind of garbage at all, right? And it's like, I don't, you know, people say, well, you're going to lose a lot of relationships that way. And it's like, that's right, but I will end up with some really healthy people around me. I cannot deal with this garbage anymore. And that's a boundary that I'm setting. And um, that's just one of my, that's just my boundaries, you know what I mean? And I'm setting them and they are what they are. I only have so much time left on this planet. I choose to spend it with healthy-minded people. I'm not, you know what I mean? People that people that care about people and they think before they speak. And when they do screw up and do something stupid, they apologize for it and they say, "Look, I'm sorry. You know that was kind of dumb. Um, I didn't really mean it coming from that way. You know, how about let me rephrase it or whatever. You know what I mean? But I just refuse to have ignorant people in my life. I absolutely refuse. You know, life is way too short and I'm moving on. You know what I mean? So like that's the thing. But I do. You know, I'm human too. I make mistakes too. And so when, you know, I have no problem apologizing. Sometimes I do say things and I'm like, oh, I guess that wasn't very cool. And, um, you know, we're all human, right? But I just have no no need for anybody in my life who's hurtful on purpose and doesn't care. Or even hurtful not on purpose and doesn't care. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, I just have no time for people like that. So we'll finish the rest of this article. This is a huge article. I mean, we well, can read through this here. Joy, This is uh, www.joy, J-O-Y, the number two, M-E-U.com, Robert Bernie's webpages. And this, we are just barely getting into the very first part of this. This is huge, um, very, very huge, long web page. So we'll be on this one probably for a while. But we'll pick this back up next week. Tomorrow I have, um, 
Barbara Hoffmeister on my show at 8 o'clock here in the morning because she lives in Germany, and so it's a better time for her. I hope you will be here. She, she's the author of the TV book. She's a worldwide renowned speaker, international speaker. She's got some great information. I hope you will join us. The to be book, and really, it's all about what do you, what do you want to do with your life? You can you can you can achieve your your goals. You can achieve your dreams, right? And, and she's such an awesome awesome lady, and she has shows here on Blog Talk Radio as well. Look up Barbara Hoffmeister H O F M E I S T E R, or look up the to be show, and check out her stuff. She's got some amazing stuff. Thanks everybody for being here. I really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. You know, I'll be back on like I said tomorrow and then Sunday, and Monday we'll pick back up with one child abuse survivor to another. If you're having a hard time coping and whatnot. I say this on every show, never give up. You know, you make the right, right decision for yourself and you get some help, right? Whatever kind of help that is, you know, calling a crisis line, whatever you have to do. But you make sure that you do it, you stick around because we certainly, man, we certainly deserve so much better, right? But we won't get it if we don't stick around and we, and we won't get it if we don't work on it ourselves, you know, to make sure that we do get what we need, right? So thanks, everybody. Have a great day and a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>